Welcome back to another VideoPad video editor tutorial with easy to follow step-by-step -step instructions. Thanks for joining me again. I recently made a tutorial explaining how to insert those YouTube green screen subscribe and like buttons. And I've left the link in the description below if you haven't already watched it. But in this tutorial, I'm going to go a bit more in depth about how to use green screen clips. I've divided this video into four sections and have left timestamps below if you'd like to jump to one section or another. As some steps require viewing other web pages, I strongly suggest you bookmark this video as there's nothing more frustrating than not being able to find a video again. Or you can simply subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's start. The first thing you need to do, of course, is to download a green screen clip. And this, as it turns out, can be one of the most difficult parts of your project as finding just the right clip can be frustratingly difficult and incredibly time consuming. You can perform a general internet search by using the keywords green screen and your topic. Note some clips are copyright protected and will require that you pay a fee, request permission, or that you credit the author. I try to only download and use clips that are royalty free and totally free to use in my not-for-profit videos. But this is an important issue that you should be aware of. Of course, another great source of finding green screen clips is right here on YouTube. Once again, you can search by using the keywords green screen and your topic. Some YouTube videos will provide an external link where you can directly download the clip. Most, however, do not. If you wish to download videos directly from YouTube from within your browser, you will need something called a browser extension in Google Chrome or add-on in Firefox. If you already have a Chrome YouTube downloader extension or a Firefox add-on installed, you're all set to go. I cannot recommend any specific extensions or add-ons as that is simply beyond the scope of this short tutorial. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate how to use an online YouTube video download service as it is applicable to all and keeping with the principle, easy is good. I have no affiliation with this site and I'm making absolutely no money from them. You can rest assured of that. It's called y2mate.com and I will leave a link in the description below. There are other online YouTube video download services. I just happen to like this one because it seems very easy to use. You simply copy the YouTube video URL you wish to download and paste it into their website and follow the simple instructions. At this point, let me quickly mention that there's nothing more frustrating than downloading a video and not being able to find it. So I suggest that you double check the path where your browser saves downloads. For example, in Google Chrome, you would click on the three hashtags, choose settings, click on the little advanced down arrow, and then click on downloads. You can see the downloads location and you can change this to whatever you wish or simply note where the download folder is located. Gosh, didn't I tell you downloading your green screen clip is half the battle? So, you found a suitable green screen clip and downloaded it from YouTube. But it includes the YouTube's channel's intro and outro, and it's actually many clips, not just one. Well, there are many ways to trim and edit your clip. It's largely a personal preference. I'm going to quickly review a couple of ways, and at the end, focus on one method that I feel is especially useful for bundled green screen clips. One way is just to insert the video on your timeline where you wish and trim it, edit it, by grabbing the handles on the left and right side of the video clip. Depending on the size and how easy it is to determine your start and finish points, this might be really easy or next to impossible. Another method to trim your clip is in the clip preview pane. We finally get to use the brackets. Use the red bracket to set your beginning point and the blue bracket to set your end point. When you are finished trimming the clip, return to your sequence preview and position your red timeline cursor where you wish to insert the green screen clip. You can now right click on the green screen clip that's in the file bin and choose overlay on sequence at cursor. Remember to choose overlay as your green screen clip must be above your main video track. 
Now, what I like to do is create a new sequence by clicking on the little plus icon in the timeline. Now add your green screen clip into this new sequence. You can now edit your green screen clip in the normal sequence preview pane mode, which I find preferable and for some reason easier. Most important, when you are finished editing your clip, you can export this small edited clip as you would export any other video. You have now created your own green screen clip that you can conveniently and easily insert at a later date whenever you want. Though this takes a little bit of extra time in the beginning, it can save you a lot of time later on. Remember, you can create many sequences, so if your original green screen clip is a bundle of many separate clips, you can create multiple small separate clips in this manner. Once you've completed your editing in the separate sequence, you can simply copy and paste it into your main timeline sequence video. Adding extra sequences is a great tool for video pad editing, and you can do a lot with it. It's now finally time to apply our green screen effect. Click on your green screen clip in your timeline to activate it. It's a green screen effect, so click on Video Effects, scroll down, from the Blending and Color Correction section, choose Green Screen. And naturally, a green screen dialog box appears. It's not too intimidating, and applying the green screen effect is possibly the easiest part of this entire project. Let's take a look at our dialog box. From the Based On option, NCH suggests that you leave this in auto unless you are a green screen expert, which I am not, so auto it is. We will return to the threshold fading and feathering. Down at the bottom, you have your hexadecimal values for the color of your background. We are not going to be dealing with that because we can choose our color from the color picker. It will probably default to green as that is the background color of most green screen clips. If you need to change the color, because sometimes the background of a green screen quote unquote clip will actually be blue or red, you would just click on the color and the edit colors box comes up and you can choose a new color. Usually the primary colors will be here. If not, you will have to select it from the color scheme above. For example, let's say you wanted to use red. Your background was red. You can click on the red. Be sure and click on New. And then click on OK. And as you can see, our color has turned to red. And this would make all the red color transparent. We need green, so let's click on our color picker again. Click on green, click on new, click on OK, and our color is green. By the way, I just want to mention that you can apply the green screen effect to any video clip or any picture. It does not have to be, quote, a green screen clip, and you can choose any color. You can get some really bizarre and weird effects this way. I do suggest that you play with this. You might get some very, very interesting results. It can take a long time for VideoPad to apply a green screen effect, and you can see the progress bar right here as it slowly changes from blue to gray. Sometimes it's gonna take a really, really long time and you might wanna take a break from your computer, walk outside, get something to eat and rest your eyes. We're going to continue. We have our green color and we are in the clip preview pane. So I'm gonna bring my mouse over to the background color and as you can see my mouse cursor has changed to a eyedropper and I'm going to click once and your video editing software will magically make the background transparent. As you can see there's still a little bit of fringe left over, a little halo effect of green left over and you delete that by increasing the value of the threshold setting. We have slider bars and we have numeric values. To get rid of that green halo effect, I personally find it easiest to use the numeric value. You can just click in the numeric value box and type a number. I suggest you start with approximately 40. 
and see how much of the halo is eliminated. And if it's not all eliminated, if you still have some green shadow around your subject, go up by increments of 10. I think there's still a little bit left, so I'm going to go up to 50. And I believe it's all gone. So I'm going to leave it right here. You can expect to use values from anywhere from 40 to 80 are common. And sometimes you have to maybe have to take it all the way up to 100 to get rid of all that fringe around your subject. If you still have some little halo, some green effect in the hair, you might try bumping up the feathering value. I am done with my green screen effect application and so I can close my green screen effect dialog box. I'm going to go back to sequence preview and I am going to export this so you can take a look. Steve's a great dancer, but he's a little big. I think we need to resize him and reposition him. Wouldn't you know it, resizing and repositioning are considered video effects. So after clicking once to activate your clip, from the top menu choose video effects and click on scale. The scale dialog box opens and from here we can both resize and reposition your clip. It looks a bit confusing, but I will explain it, and it's really not that complicated once you use it a few times. If necessary, click on the Sequence Preview pane so you can see your object in relation to the rest of your video. First of all, make sure the Maintain Aspect Ratio box is ticked. This keeps your object in the correct proportion as you make it larger or smaller. Only uncheck it if you wish to distort your image and you can create extremely tall and thin or short and fat images. I am leaving it checked. Use the horizontal or vertical ratio options to resize the object. As we have the aspect ratio box ticked, it doesn't matter which one you choose. The object will automatically maintain its original proportion. Move the horizontal ratio slider bar to the left to decrease the size and move the horizontal ratio slider bar to the right to increase the size. If you're using the numeric value boxes, a value of less than 1 decreases the size of the object and a value greater than 1 increases the size of the object. Easy. Depending upon your computer's hardware configuration, it may take some time for a video pad to process your changes. If you find using the slider bar causes too much lag, you may wish to try using the numeric value boxes. And this will hold true for all the repositioning options too. I have to use the numeric value boxes because I have an older computer, but I think it's largely a matter of personal preference more than anything else. Use the Base X option to reposition the object to the left or right along the horizontal axis. That is, moving the Base X slider bar to the left will move your object to the left, and moving the Base X slider bar to the right will reposition the object to the right. Note that if you're using the numeric value boxes, you need a negative number value to move the object to the left and a positive number value to move the object to the right. Use the Base Y option to reposition the object up or down, that is, along the vertical axis. Moving the Base Y slider bar to the left moves the object higher, and moving the Base Y slider bar to the right moves the object lower. If you are using the numeric value boxes, Note that a negative number moves the object up and a positive number moves the object down. The maximum value for repositioning is 100 and sometimes you might find that moving the slider bar all the way to the left or all the way to the right still does not position your object as far as you would like. When this happens, I use the offset X and Y options. You can use them the same way you use the Base X and Base Y options 
and this should help you reposition your object to the farthest reaches of the screen. There, I told you it wasn't that bad. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize all this. I will leave this information in the description below. You can find timestamps to each section, links I mentioned in this video, and explanatory notes in the description below. Adding green screen clips can create an exciting element to your video. Do not be intimidated by this process, and you can easily add this to your VideoPad video editing repertoire. Happy editing! Thanks for watching. Tick that like button and be sure and sub to my channel. You can find all my VideoPad tutorials from the link in the description below.